Welcome back to the Remember Why You Started podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Higgins. This is episode number three, and we're going to talk basically about investments. And not the investments in which you're referring to, the investments in which I'm referring to, the investments that are required in order to take the next step in entrepreneurship, life, or whatever it is. The version of you right now is exactly why you have what you have, and if you want something different, you have to completely change your identity. Now, in order to change your identity, I call them investments, right? Others may have a different name for it, but, you know, my terms of investments, the ones that are required or a necessity, like a prerequisite in order to take the next step in life are, we'll start with one, right, is in general your self-habits, right? It's what you do, what you put into your body, what you feed yourself. When I was first um, transformed into a new person, I guess you could say, and I was trying to change my identity, and I, I still am every day. Right, I try to develop good habits in terms of when I wake up, right, the number one priority is health. Right, health is wealth. How can I perform the way I'm supposed to if I don't feel the way I should? Right? I don't feel the way I should because I'm eating processed foods or you know, I'm doing things I'm not supposed to, right? like alcohol, for instance. Alcohol is a poison. Right? Your body's not going to work at optimal level while it's in your system. And a lot of people don't understand that. Right? I'm not going to break down what needs to be broken down. My body acts as what's going on. We need this out of our body right now. That's number one in terms of self-habits, you know. And then another thing is, like, even the way you dress. Like, you always want to be presentable. Like, I have a scheduled haircut every single Friday. Do I go every Friday? No. I probably go every other two weeks, but I like to have my name on the book. That way, if I need one, I can because I'm around a lot of people, and it's important to me to look presentable at all times. I don't want to come in looking like a mess. I don't want to look clean, sharp, professional. Right? It's how people perceive you. Perception is reality. In terms of another thing is organization. Right? Being organized, I say, like, messy Messy room, messy thoughts, right? Messy situation, it, it just all comes into cluster and everything works in one. So that's why like when I wake up, it's about decision making. My outfit for the next day is picked out, right? Right now it's, let's say it's 2.05, right? My outfit is already picked out for tomorrow, right? It's right in the bathroom, it's ready, that we're gonna wake up, I have my water, I go right to the bathroom, I get changed, I'm ready to roll. Everything is organized, everything's on a notebook, I have my calendar, I have one notebook, geared just towards programming. That's where I like to program. I'm not someone who types a lot. I mean, I do, but not necessarily, like I don't enjoy it. I prefer writing. It's the only way I'm gonna process it. I feel like when I see it and I write it, it means a lot more to me. I have my notebook for journaling, right? Because every day I like to journal. I just take things that I felt were important throughout the day, felt like, uh, you know, are meaningful, things that I can look back, see where I wasted time, right? Because when you look over your day and you say, I have 24 hours and I wasted this much time sleeping, right? It's a waste of time. I need to maximize what I'm doing when I'm here, while I'm here. After organization, honestly, like the number one thing you really need to get organized is you know, who you surround yourself with. Right? That's probably the biggest one. And I know you hear it over and over like you are who you are friends with or you are who you surround yourself with. It, is, it means so much, and it's so true. And as you get older, you start to see yourself. Uh, it's like who you affiliate yourself with is who you become. Right? If I'm around a bunch of CEOs and people who make millions of dollars, you're going to be the next one. But you're around a bunch of people who are, let's say, smoking cigarettes, you're going to be the next person. And a lot of people don't understand that. And a lot of people don't understand that, like, when you try to um, find a better life and when you're trying to get your life together, right, that's when you kind of see who's not your friends. That's when you see who your friends aren't. There's going to be people who try to, like, bring you down and people try to, you know, whether talk down to you or, or become a distraction and you see, like, wow, this person isn't good for me. I'm 23, about to be 24 in a couple of days. Now, I've been to two bars in my entire life, Ocean House and Red Rock. Two primarily because I extremely respect the owner and I love him. He's a great man. He's taught me a lot about business, a lot about life. And I just enjoy it because it's, I like the crowd. It's where our gym has our parties. Other than that, I haven't been to no bar A. I haven't been to nowhere crazy. You know, I'm not a fan. I don't like to be around people who I don't really, who, you know, feelings aren't mutual. I don't know them. We don't respect one another. Not that I don't respect them, but like, you know, I just like being around people who I like being around who make me feel good, who I, you know, I appreciate their company, I respect them. That's why I'm a lot different, right? I'd rather go to dinner. I'm someone who goes to bed by 8.30 on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? If I showed you my watch, my watch has been telling me for the past three days I desperately need sleep, right? That's why, you know, it's so important. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want friends who, who rather, you know, push me to go out when they know it's not what I'm comfortable with, right? Like me, like I'm someone, I, I have something planned every single morning. So when I have something planned and I know I need to get to something, Right? If you tell your friend, hey, listen, man, I got a lot going on tomorrow. I got to make sure I'm prepared. I got, you know, 20 kids. I got to kill this session. It means a lot. This person knows this person. And that friend's like, dude, you're, you know, you're being a bum. You're being lazy. Like, that is not a real good friend. 
right? That's someone who's constantly going to bring you down. And I understand at times you need to like take a deep breath and understand, you know, you are young, you, you only have these people in your life at some point, And I, you know, and I get it 100%. But I only have such a short amount of time to do what I need to do. Like real entrepreneurship is like sacrificing now for the things that, you know, that you want for the things that you can have. I am sacrificing who I am for who I'm, I plan to become. In order for me to have those things, I need to, like I said, I need to invest in certain things today. And that investment starts with me and who my circle is. Now, one of the other biggest investments in terms of circle is who you decide to spend your life with. This is probably the biggest one that makes and breaks a lot more people than you can imagine. I love myself 100%. And that was the number one thing. When I first started this whole entire stone fit, nothing started without me. So I had to make sure that I appreciated who I am, everything I stood for, everything that I have, everything that I will be. It, it was just the self-reassurance that like, I don't need anybody, right? I'm, I'm so confident and comfortable alone. I like to be in my own peace and my own thoughts. When you get everything in order, right? I say relationships come, networks come, like all that stuff just happens. And it's true. Like my girlfriend currently, Vanessa. I am dating Vanessa for three years. I think Vanessa's the one, right? I believe she thinks I'm the one. And I, I, I pray that it works. And I have no doubt in my mind that it won't. When I met Vanessa, she was still a senior in college at the time, right? And I had started Stonefit. And that was very, very direct and clear, right? That's when I talk about the uh, investment. Like, you need to know exactly what you're doing, what your plans are, your intentions, everything. And I told her from the jump, like, listen, I'm, you, you're in school right now. Right? You're finishing your last semester. I got a lot going on. You know, when you figure your stuff out, you know, if we, in the end, if we meet again, you know, we'll take it from there. And that's what ended up happening. Like, I remember we went on our first date, and it, w it was real simple. And we were real open and honest. I think we got, we got breakfast at um, Over Easy. And, you know, I told her exactly my plans for the future. And she told me her plans for the future. You know, you don't want to look at a relationship like a business, but also it is. Because, it, you know, it, you're growing right? as much as I, if I'm not going to continue to grow if this person doesn't want to grow. Right, so if we're not both watering each other's flower or watering each other's seed, we're both going to stay the same. And eventually that's what happens in relationships, at least nowadays, is it just falls apart and it dies. Right, so we both have goals. We both have common interests. We both have the same but completely separate lives. Right? She's an accountant. Right? So she's in the city. She's a lot different. Now, I obviously run this, but fitness is also her passion. So that's why she has so much fun in terms of helping me. She also understands me, right? and that's a big thing. You have to be able to understand one another. You know, you ha that's why I say you have to invest in the right person because it means so much. Like, I am someone who, I like to go to bed early, right? So does she. Right? She knows, oh, Kevin, you got a session. Like, you have to make sure you're on top of this. I remember our first time, I, I turned 21. I was like, oh, you got to go to AC. You got to go to AC. And I did not want to go to Atlantic City at all. But her uh, stepfather at the time had a room for us. So it's like, all right, whatever. We ended up going. We left Atlantic City at 5 a.m. I don't know if any of you guys have been in Lake City. Obviously, most of you have. You know, it's a club. It's a party. We went out to dinner. We went to bed. We didn't go to nowhere. We didn't play no, no slots, no gambling, nothing. We went to bed, woke up 5 a.m., came back because I had an 8 a.m. session on a Sunday, right? And I, I, I wish I never scheduled it, but I did, right? I knew that it was a commitment that I had made, so I have to be there, right? Now, not a lot of people or significant others are going to be happy when that happens. You know, and you're like, oh, listen, we got to get up and go. But, you know, she does. She's a soldier. Every single Sunday, we're here for three hours, getting a deep clean, right? She's on her hands and knees, scrubbing the bathroom. Like, that means a lot to me, right? Before I started Stonefit, you know, as I was starting Stonefit, that's when I met her. And as I was growing Stonefit, she slowly came into my life. And that's why I say you have to love yourself 100% because that's when you'll know what's real and what's not. If someone comes into your life and they're going to give you, let's say, 98%, right? They're not really going to be fully invested and fully appreciate you and want you. You're going to know from the jump that it's not worth it, right? I already love myself 100, so why would I take something less? All right, so if you're not going to add value to your life, then why would you waste your time and invest in someone or something that feelings aren't reciprocal, feelings aren't 100% even and the same? To me, that was the biggest thing, and I, I, you know, it, it's all about adding value to each other's life because you don't want to waste time, right? Because it, it's so, you know, like I said, it's borrowed time, so you have to maximize and make the most of it. And a lot of people fall in this trap that, they, you know, they think they're in a good situation because they feel comfortable. You're going to fight. You're going to argue. You're going to bicker. It probably won't be like the movies that you see, but that's real love and that's real appreciation. And, you know, that's why I think, I pray, I hope that what I have is real. And, you know, to me, that's the number one mistake that a lot of people make is they rush into situations. Vanessa is my first girlfriend, actually. I never believed in just random dating, right? Why am I going to um, commit to someone if I'm not really serious about it, right? A lot of people just commit because they need that, you know, that gratification, that self-love that I need somebody and I need somebody and you're scared that you're going to be lonely, but 
you know, like I said, I love myself. I invested in myself. That's why I didn't really need anybody. And I think when you're comfortable like that and you understand that, that's when it becomes dangerous because that's when you can see the world from a different lens and you can see, you know, who's important, who's true intentions, all that. And, you know, that's like Vanessa, like I said, is my first girlfriend and she will be my last girlfriend. So come choosing a partner, you know, just be 100% mindful, be open, be honest, know who you are, know what you like, know what you dislike. And it all starts with you. You have to love yourself. You have to commit to yourself before you commit to somebody, right? Because no one deserves anything less than 100%. I want to be around people who want to get better. I want to be around uh, other entrepreneurs, people who are hungry. You know, I don't like to be sometimes the smartest one in the room, which I promise you I'm not. I wish I was, but I'm not. Like this weekend, I'm going to Texas, right? I'm going to be in a very uncomfortable situation, right? That's another one in terms of investments. So I invested in this place in Texas. It's called the Cedar Trunk Ranch. In this, you're going to learn so much. You're learning from the owners of Super Coffee, uh, CEO of Equinox, the CEO, uh, CFO of Jim Shark, um, Coca-Cola as well, CEO, and tons of different other companies and businesses and entrepreneurs. So it's ran by Devin Levesque. Any of you guys know him? Uh, you definitely have probably seen him everywhere, right? He's more of like a fitness enthusiast freak. He just climbed uh, Antarctica, I think. He's like the first person ever to get cell serve, cell, cellular data in Antarctica using SpaceX. So that is definitely really cool, and I'm super excited to learn from him. I'm excited to learn from everybody, to be honest with you. You know, when I'm down there, it, it's an investment, right? Whatever you lay out to begin with, right, you know that it's going to come back tenfold. When you go there, like, it may suck in the beginning because, you know, you dish out this money and you're like, what if I'm not going to get it? But it forces you to change and adapt, right? When you, I always think, like, I bought a microphone, right? It was an investment. Now, it forced me to start a podcast, right? Cause I said, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I was putting on a back burner. I bought it and said, you know what? Well, I bought it. I don't want to waste it. Right, same situation as my camera, same situation as my laptop, and the same situation as this. So that's why sometimes like you don't want to almost have a plan B, and I think when you invest in plan A, 100% invest in plan A, you don't really think about plan B, right? You just got to make it work, right? You just kind of adapt on the fly, you go with it, and, you know, you just go from there. That's what this weekend is. You know, I'm, I'm going to vlog the whole weekend so people have an idea. I, mean, I was texting my friend Jenna today, and she's the one who, like, set it up running. She said, yeah, Saturday we start with like a 10K, which is like 6.2 miles. She said, it's way worse than Homedale Park, like the woods and stuff. So I'm sitting there. I'm telling my girlfriend, my dad, I'm like, I'm going to die. Like, I got to run six and a half, like, miles with, like, the fittest people in the world who run every single day. Like, I'm watching these guys post their, you know, their runs and stuff. And I'm like, I'm a moderate runner. I'm not like a crazy runner. Right? I run at like an average pace. The average pace to me is like nine minutes. Right? Nothing crazy. I don't like to go to zone five. These guys are crushing, you know, five-minute miles, five-and-a-half-minute miles, six-minute miles, like 20 miles deep. So they're going to be in the next activity. I'm going to be finish it up in the ice bath crying. But, I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to it. But, that, you know, like I said, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. And that's another thing. You know, I, I'm so direct in what I want. So anything that affects what I want in a negative way, right, I'm not going to – it's not good for me. I'm going to get rid of it. Right, so I'm on this path, right? When you put yourself on this path and you know where you are, point A and point B. Now, the recipe is simple to get there, right? Everything is simple. It's just a matter of doing. That's the hard part, right? And this whole year, I've been as consistent as I possibly can. Right? Like even last week, I didn't work a, a single hour less than 13. Right? I was on top of everything. We Yesterday, we recorded like 80-something recipes for all our members for our challenge coming up. Now, it's just consistency, and I'm continuously just investing in me and my time. And, and, and to me, that's investing in my customers, right? I'm, I'm buying new equipment, right? We have way bigger plans this upcoming year, right? I'm putting so much time into making this nutrition plan as perfect as it can be so these people can get the transformations that they want, right? I'm willing to sit there on phone calls and FaceTimes now and, and do everything that's necessary in order to get to point B, right? And, and you just have to continue to look at it through that lens and through a different perspective. I invest in things that are going to invest back into you, right? Everything's a reinvestment. What you put out is what you're going to get back in. When I put things out that, you know, it's when the feelings aren't reciprocal or feelings aren't mutual, it's not worth it. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your energy, right? You, your time and who you are is so valuable, and just don't th let it go to waste because you don't want to look back and be like, shit, like, I could have done so much more with who I am and what I have, and I don't want to regret anything. Regret is what kills you, right? I, I don't want to regret nothing. I just, you know, I want to just live and what's next, Right, that's the thing. The cool thing about Devin, who we're gonna meet, uh, he's got a board. It's the what's next board. Like what's next? Like he just went to Antarctica. He comes home Wednesday. Thursday morning, he sets up for his event. Right, <laughs> he he was in Dubai for the World Series. Um, not World Series. He's in Dubai for the uh, World Cup. 
like the next day flew to Antarctica, then the next day came home, did the ranch. Like he's just always doing the next thing. So when you're around these people and you invest so much time being around these people, so I'm trying to like, you know, see who I, you know, my circle is and you see what they do and they're like, well, I, I have to be able to do more. I wouldn't, do not want to run the seven miles. I'm going to be honest with you. Like straight out, do not want to run it. But I'm going to run next to my friend Rob Duran, the owner of Almost Home, because I know come like mile five, because you don't have to run the whole thing. It's like this certain amount of laps. And I know mile five, I'm going to try to tap out. And I know he's going to be the person to say, like, no, you're running. You're finishing with me. We're going to go for 10 today, right? Because that's the type of person he is. Now, in terms of reinvestment, just be thankful, right? Reinvestment, be thankful. Those who invested in you, right? Whether it's from a business standpoint, customers, or whether it's just people who were with you from the beginning. Those people, if you didn't have like a seat at my struggle, like you're not getting a VIP to my success. And I heard that and it just hit me because it meant so much. Like if you were someone who counted me out and you doubted me or you know, you didn't think I was gonna make it and you told me I didn't make it, and now that I'm there, don't call me. I don't need your phone call, I don't need, we don't, you know. I'm not mad at you, I'm not disappointed. I don't regret not, you know, you saying that because a lot of people said that because a lot of people didn't believe. And it was never about proving you wrong or anyone wrong. It was always about proving myself right because I knew what I'm capable of. I know, you know, that I was supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be doing this, right? And that's why those people who were with you and saw you in your dark time, you have to be thankful. You have to reinvest in them because you owe it to them, right? Not only to just, you know, tell them how much you love them and how much they mean to you and how much they care, but, you know, you owe it to them in terms of reach your potential. It's stuff it means reach your potential. We've had it on our T-shirts. We continue to have it on some of our T-shirts. Right, it's that every block of stone has a statue inside of it, and it's the task of the sculptor to discover it. We all have that higher self, that better version, right? So every day you have to chisel your stone, get better, invest in it, invest time in chiseling your stone, right? Wake up, set a routine, work out, right? Get whatever you need to get done. Be clear, be direct in what you want. When you're direct and you ask the world what you want, the world's going to give it to you, right? As long as long as you just are resilient and you continue to ask and be persistent. You can't just throw in the towel when things get hard. Invest in the right things, invest in you, and you just never, you know, for a second doubt that it's not worth it. Just remember why you started, the reason why you started, you know, why it's so important. And, you know, that's what I have to leave you with today is just, you know, continue to be great, choose your time wisely, choose who you're around wisely, right? And remember the same, to remember these same steps that I use to help me separate and change my identity to become someone different and have things that I never thought I would. And right now, I'm in the next stage, the next chapter of my life. Where I am right now, I could stay, right? But I, I, I was comfortable for a little bit, right? But I, now I'm trying to get uncomfortable. I'm trying to challenge myself, the people around me, to level up, right? I want more for myself. I want more for the people around me, people closest to me, more for my family, my friends. You know, I'm going to continue to strive to become a new me. So cheers to challenge.